Hoskin. I'm Jean Monsieur. Uh, Carlos Molletia. I'm Marianne Seiler. And today we're going to take you on a design and innovation journey. Um, and we're going to begin, like we've begun um, with the rest of the groups, with empathy. We were faced with a question, um, how might we improve the health and well-being of students at Notre Dame? And initially, we kind of all generated these uh, probably 25 unique ideas. There was some overlap on the first, uh, on a few of them. And when we were looking at these ideas, we realized that they fell into kind of four major groups, and it was all how we interpreted the word well-being. Um, there was physical well-being, and that included kind of working out your food options, um, relationship, community, community well-being, just kind of do you feel fulfilled with your friendships here? Um, three, mental, emotional well-being. This revolved a lot around anxiety and stress. And then fourth, just spiritual well-being. Um, not only knowing your religion and your faith, but being able to kind of practice that freely. And this kind of realized that we needed to, to define how we wanted to look at well-being and health. And we began to kind of investigate that further by looking at our user, understanding kind of the nature of the problem and the person that we were going to be um, dealing with. We began with the user context. We wanted to see what do Notre Dame students kind of think about themselves? How do they feel about themselves? What do they do? What do they surround themselves with? Who do they interact with? Think. We think we're smart, um, successful, uh, we're compassionate, we're curious. Um, we value our relationships, we're future oriented. Feel. We love Notre Dame, uh, we love our friends and our family. We're very driven, but that also makes us very stressed out. Um, we care about the state of the world. Most of us follow sports, especially Notre Dame sports. Things we do, we're extremely busy, we're active. We study a lot, uh, we try and work out, we're going out with our friends, bars, parties, games. Um, we usually work and then we're always kind of just planning for our future again. Environment, obviously the Notre Dame environment, um, our South Bend environment, our hometown, if we studied abroad. And the people and interactions, again, our friends, our family, Notre Dame staff, faculty, professors, our bosses. And that kind of led us to this major insight. And we thought about this big change that most of the typical donors make. In high school, we are juggling 100 things in the air. We were probably the leader of a club. We were on a sports team. We were doing well academically. We had a very set schedule. We went to practice, school, et cetera. And then you make this change to college, where you're still trying to meet all of those commitments, be active, do well in school, have relationships, but you have a lot more free time. So you're trying to manage your time and, and in that way also managing your stress. So we really wanted to kind of drive forward with this. How do we manage our time and how do we manage our stress? We began um, ethnographic interviews to see if users kind of felt that this was kind of a problem they were dealing with. We wanted to identify what well-being meant to Notre Dame students. We used a tell me about a time approach. Um, surveyed about 20 students, mixes of grades and majors, um, and understanding their barriers to health and well-being. And we got four major takeaways. First is efficiency. Most of these students want to make a healthy decision. They want to work out. They want to eat a healthy meal. But it's usually kind of inconvenient or inefficient. They don't have the time. It's not as accessible. Life balance. Um, we are genuinely happiest when we have, we're doing well academically, our relationships are kind of good, we're able to work out, um, and we kind of have time to, to have a life balance. Time management. This is a skill that is extremely um, related to our health and our well-being, um, but it's one that's very hard to cultivate, and a lot of people don't really learn how to manage their time until the end of their junior year, senior year, if at all. And then stress. Um, I think with finals around the corner, I don't need to highlight the importance of stress management um, for students. And Pat here is going to explain something. Um, however, we're going to take a look at this. I took so much time and I had such a busy week to be like, that I sleep and I mentioned that Julie got to me and I wanted to test it. I'm doing this real pretty well. I was so stressed and sleeping, but I ended up more than before. I'm not sure if people in the back were able to hear that. The volume wasn't up too loud. But what Pat was saying is that he studied extensively for this test. Um, but eventually, sleep deprivation got to him, and he bombed the exam, even though he knew the material. He just wasn't able to manage his time and his stress level appropriately to succeed. So we used some user observations. We went to the library where people usually study and kind of trying to figure out how do they relax? How do they decompress when they've been studying for hours on end? This first one here shows that all right, this person wants to relax, but if they're off campus, their house is far away. If they're in a dorm, they have to kind of walk pretty far. And you can't really efficiently relax and decompress in the Hesburgh Library. You can put on Netflix or go on Facebook, but you're kind of just procrastinating. You aren't really decompressing. This user observation, again, kind of indicates people who efficiently use their time. So some people, <coughs> they are able to go somewhere and take a 30-minute nap. 
Um, but a lot of people, again, just get on Facebook or they go talk to friends and they think they might be relaxing or taking a break, but you're really just getting more tired and procrastinating the inevitable work you have to do. And then we were able to find, um, actually, Professor Angst gave us an article by Mara Kelly, and she wrote this after um, JPW weekend with her family. And she kind of, I'm going to read the quote for people who can't read the back, but coming to a prestigious university like Notre Dame is an honor. But it also means that you go to school with the smartest and most accomplished kids in the country. It means that you compete on a grading curve that it's not too easy to ride when studying has to take a back seat to stri stress, depression, homesickness, family problems, and social anxieties. And at this point, I kind of want to indicate that we know that going to an elite university dealing with stress and time management is kind of the nature of the beast. We believe that there's kind of room for Notre Dame to help kids manage this lifestyle. So from this empathy stage, our major takeaway is that there needs to be a quick fix. We don't have a lot of time to de-stress and take a study break, so it needs to be something 15, 30 minutes, maybe an hour. Something that helps them deal with stress management, making healthy living easy, and kind of dealing with the time constraint issue. So from now, we wanted to define and refine to find the right point of view to reach the best solution for the people we're interested in. The first thing we did was the expert interview with the psychologist Ernest E. Seiler, and I'll read the quote for you guys. People do not understand that your body's physical health is interconnected with your body's mental health. Stress, depression, and anxiety can cause a plethora of physical problems, such as digestive issues, sleeping disorders, and lack of energy. So the main takeaway from that is that mental and Mental health and emotional well-being is at the core of physical health and wellness. And then we made a journey map from someone doing an exam. And you can see that it's really a roll of the dice. If it goes well, it'll go well. But if it goes poorly, it goes terrible for the student. And we had four unmet needs that we analyzed from this. Time, a place to decompress, assisting with cramming, and assistance with time management. From then on in social media, we wanted to ask two questions to help our point of view. What is well-being and what are effective means of relaxation? On Twitter, Pinterest, Facebook, blogs, and Instagram. And there are basically two things that we found. There are several articles and analyses that show that mental health really carries your physical health and that physical health is very impacted and that people are looking for these lists of quick you know, tips and tricks on how to release stress or anxiety and things that they can do every day. And then we came to our personas. The vertical axis is the number of commitments, basically how busy the people are. And the horizontal axis is how good they are at managing time and doing what they have to do. From the top right, we have no time Nick. He has a lot of things to do, but he has the skills to get them done. But he's always exhausted, and he needs a good, quick relaxation fix. Um, on the bottom is one track mind, Mary. She's on the ball because she doesn't have a lot of things to do, but she's not very competent at doing what she has to do, so she still gets stressed. To the left of her is Lazy Larry. He just relaxes all the time, he's a procrastinator, and he doesn't get his work done properly because he's so busy relaxing. Above him is Last Minute Lucy, who regardless of what's going on, if her balance is off, she always cramps. Now you can see that there are the two stars here and the two X's. We wanted to focus on No Time Nick and Lazy Larry because No Time Nick needs that quick fix. If he's always in the library juggling his stuff, he needs to go to a relaxation room, get a nice relaxation, and get back to doing what he's doing. While Lazy Larry, he needs to separate his work from his relaxation environment and have places where he can focus on either and switch and get better balance. Now passing on to Carlos who will tell about uh, the So the, this idea, the first idea we came up with was with healthy vending machines. Um, from my own personal experiences and talking with people uh, at off time, so where you don't really have time, the healthy options are not on par with the unhealthy options. Sample is like if you're studying in your dorm at 3 a.m. in January, where it's piling snow outside, and you really need something to eat. The vending machines have Skittles, have M&Ms, but they don't really have anything that's healthy. So they're not giving you the option to be healthy. We wanted to give people the option to be healthy with the choices they make in food. Then revamping Grab and Go. Grab and Go is worth one meal pass, and we feel that it's not on par with what you get at the dining hall. So we wanted to make it something where you can actually get an actual meal out of it, not just like a sandwich and chocolate milk. 
uh, we wanted to model it after the margins to go back. So have a to go box that you can fill with actual food and you can get an actual meal out of it rather than just getting sandwiches or water. Then the smoothie bar, a lot of people totally like the idea of a smoothie bar, especially people who went to the gym. They felt it was a healthy option after going to the gym. Maybe not necessarily a full meal, but it definitely was healthy and could keep them going for a little bit longer. We also have our mentors program. Um, this idea was basically pairing freshmen with upperclassmen who could kind of tell them how to adapt, how to better use their time. And we felt that this one-on-one -on -one time maybe would get them to be more open to actually tell us what their issues are and that it could really help them adapt to the college life from a freshman perspective. Then contemporary topics, it's one of the most outdated courses we have here and it's a requirement for everyone. So if we have to take it anyways, we felt that we could revamp it, make it more hands-on, uh, use modern teaching techniques to get to people and to impact them early on in, in their careers at Notre Dame. Finally, then we had a game room. This, again, the idea of de-stressing, stepping out of the working environment, kind of getting that time in where you can think of something else and then go back in and go back to work. Kind of the picture we had with this, I don't know if you would watch House of Cards, but Francis Underwood just playing his PS3 for a while and then getting back to taking over the presidency. That's kind of what we had in mind. And then finally we came to the relaxation space. If you go to the library and you've been there seven hours and you feel like you need to take a nap and you go to a couch, you don't feel comfortable, you feel people are staring at you, it's kind of like frowned upon to like sleep. So we wanted a space where people could go rest, lie back, close their eyes for half an hour, relax, de-stress, and then go back, especially those people who are spending lots of time in the library. And here's an interview we did on study breaks. So with the study breaks, I usually do are like, um, I have to leave campus, like I'll go to Starbucks or uh, Dunkin' or like even home, for like a quick nap or something. But um, usually that requires me to pack up all my stuff and like leave the library. It takes a, a bit of time. But ideally, like if I could do that all on campus, I would be really interested to study, I feel like. Okay, so based off of our key insights of um, Notre Dame students needing a quick fix, having an efficient but like healthy option, and then also dealing with stress management, we came up with two original prototypes. First, we wanted to go with the idea of the healthy vending machine. Um, this is making your healthy choices easier and quicker to grab. Uh, if we could put these in some classroom buildings, maybe in the dorms, it, when you're looking for a quick snack, you don't have to grab the M&Ms, you don't have to grab the Skittles, you can grab some carrots, an apple, maybe um, a naked one of the naked smoothie flavors, or orange juice, apple juice, or even some types of yogurt. So we did this prototype in class, we had a few people walk through it. Um, a lot of people really liked the idea, but one of the things they were concerned about is that they didn't know when it was last restocked. And so we decided to add the last restock time and we realized that this is an awesome idea, but right, right now we didn't really want to focus on the healthy food options. We wanted to focus on that stress management because the Notre Dame student is dealing with so much stress, so many commitments, and things like that. So we decided to put, take the relaxation room and put that into sort of action. So we first did this 2D prototype and drew out an idea, and people gave us a lot of feedback. At the top, we have some nap pods, which we got off of the Google idea where they have nap pods stacked on top of each other. You can use it for about 30 minutes to an hour and you kind of climb into a dark, like whole cubby sort of thing. And you're able to take a nap in there. Um, having plants to set the mood, natural lighting, the bean bag cluster like in DBART, we see there's tons of people using it, but there's not enough bean bags to meet the demand. And they're constantly taken up. And then even having um, just a couch and maybe a television or something like that. So taking this relaxation room prototype and getting some feedback about it. First, some people said natural sunlight's great but for mood enhancement, but won't it be hard to nap in there? And that was a great thing that we kept in mind when doing our final prototype. Another thing, won't the nap pods get dirty? How are you going to control for people using this for studying instead of relaxing? Maybe people would actually see the couch and be like, oh, maybe I'll study my study guide for my next exam in there instead of just using it for the relaxation purpose that it is. Have you ever heard of the nap pods at Google offices? You can incorporate them. We um, originally had the nap pod idea and then 
decided the Google ones are even cooler, and that's why we have them up there. Couldn't you put the vending machine in the relaxation room? Well, this is genius. <laughs> different people need different spaces for relaxation. So whether you like to meditate uh, and do yoga, or whether you just want to sit on a couch and watch TV, or whether you do want to take a nap, different people like to relax in different ways. And then this may be too fancy, but what about a fish tank? <laughs> so our final prototype, first we want to show what it would look like in the library. This would be the first place we'd like to put it, just because that's where people are for the most amount of time studying, whether they're pulling an all-nighter or just there for tons of hours during the day. A lot of times they need a quick break. So second floor of the library was where we thought it would be great. We would like to have in the break room, natural lighting, private recliners, a couch with a TV, bean bags, natural plants, and the fish tank for decoration. Um, but on top of that, we would like to have a separate meditation room for those people who do like to sit, like maybe meditate for a minute, do some yoga, where there would be no windows, hardwood flooring, some yoga mats, some calming music, and books on meditation. And then the vending machines we incorporated inside of the relaxation room. They may not be the healthy vending machines that we want, but kids do want to have an option to grab a quick snack. But then we thought the deep relaxation room is a great idea. The lighting for natural lighting is great. Sets a mood for just watching TV and relaxing. But if you do want to take a nap, you do need that dark area. So we thought about the double stack nap pods, but we. They would have to have a 30 or an hour time limit just because the demand would be probably pretty high for it. Um, dealing with the idea of it being dirty, you would check out a blanket and then those would be washed every night. Um, and nap pods with one to two hour time constraints, bean bags with 30 minute time constraints, and no music but also eye, shade, like eye shades to check out to make sure you got the most darkness you could for sleeping. And then there's a picture of the type of stackable nap pods that you climb into the cubby and take a quick nap. So in terms of implementing this, we think the library is the best place to do it first, but it would be awesome to have a little one in every one of the classroom buildings. Right now, DBART has the beanbag chairs, but like we said, there's um, so much demand and not enough beanbag chairs. So we thought maybe adding the dark room inside DBART and then going within other classroom buildings like Mendoza, the um, OSHAD, Como, and even the engineering building for those people who are in different places around campus and still want to find a spot to relax. And then the purpose for napping, reclining, and resting during class breaks, this dark room would have no music and a one hour time limit on each of the nap pods and relaxing chairs. So that's our final idea. And we think this will seriously help stress management here at Notre Dame and help students to become more efficient when studying. So if anybody have any questions, comments, or concerns? for 20 minutes just to grab a yogurt, quick sandwich, if during busy times, having a vending machine would be that much easier. I have a question on that relaxation room and the, and the design. We we able to somehow test that out with your users to see, you know, if that met their needs or not? Yeah, it was hard. Obviously, we couldn't set up a room, but we brought, like, the floor plans and different kind of, like, images from Google to kind of set the stage. Um, and that's kind of what they gave feedback on. Did they get feedback on the proper location for the relaxation room? Yeah, it was major, just like major study spaces, so obviously the library, and then kind of class buildings for in between class breaks when you're just exhausted. Hi, I'm from the library. What, what made you pick that particular location that's so important? Um, we, it was like uh, the natural lighting with the windows over there. And then I was aware that the second floor is going through another renovation, so we thought it was kind of like an optimal time to uh, kind of suggest this, uh, because I don't know if there's renovations going to be going on in the third and above floor. I knew that there was just going to be the first and second floor was continuing to get renovated. 
Also with the first floor, just having done that whole makeover for more relaxing kind of study spaces, but not a relaxation space, we decided we shouldn't mess with that right away. But the location is obviously very flexible. Right. Can they help that just? <laughs> I was thinking if you're looking for a dark space, um, probably the lower levels are better. You better bet. You try to have competing interests there, but you need natural light for some of it. Mm -hmm. And then um, dark space for that deep relaxation. Room. Yeah. So, you know, we have, we have a lot of windows on first and second. We, I guess, from our perspective, we try to use, keep those open to um, users and their long periods of study. The studies have shown that people actually prefer that type of space mm -hmm. for study. So it's an interesting idea, but I think I would think about probably the lower level for something like that. I think definitely for like the dark area, at least, that would be a great place to put it. And interestingly, we put in the official TV and, and her couch mm -hmm. area, and that's a like least used space in the fishbowl. And it could be that it's because it's combined with a bunch of other study space, but yeah. we have in fact heard from students that they were looking for relaxation the realization spaces in the way you guys have talked about this. So it's been interesting for us to see that people will shut that TV off and nobody will sit in the sort of relaxation area I think in the fishbowl. In talking to people kind of interviewed, there's kind of like this stigma of like trying to like take a nap in like this open space. So they wanted something that's kind of specifically designated for relaxation. Um, so I know I've like slept on the couches in the library when I'm pulling an all-nighter and it's not kind of the optimal sleeping location. Or even just if you're watching TV while everybody else is studying like in the fish play area that you set up, um, people kind of don't want you watching TV while they're trying to study behind you. You kind of feel bad that you're oh, you're relaxing, you're watching TV, but they're working on the test they have in the next two hours. It's just the st same thing with the stigma. Did you get any feedback on the concourse? The, the concourse now is furniture at the end of the year. People find that to be a good breakaway space. I think they definitely do. Um, I think that's used more for, in terms of like taking a break, maybe making a quick phone call, doing things like that, instead of just sitting there and relaxing. Yeah. This would be more of like just a very quiet place where you can kind of decompress, take a nap um, in like a private area. Any other questions?